Hello there. In this video, we'll be proving that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is 1. So, to start, take note that the two special trigonometric limits are first, the limit of sine x over x as x approaches 0 is 1 and second the limit of 1 minus cosine x all over x as x approaches 0 is 0. So these two are useful in determining more complex trig limits later on. For this video our focus would be on the first limit. So let's move this up here. And again, our goal in this one is to show that this limit is indeed true. To show this or to prove this, we'll be needing a figure. So let's first have here a unit circle. And then let's plot a triangle out here with a line around here. And so we have this figure out here and let's denote some or let's take note of some measurements that are known. So since again this is a unit circle, then it follows that this out here, so the radius is equal to 1 as well as this one is equal to 1. For this angle out here, let's denote that as x. And so this is what we'll be needing in order to solve or prove this one. So we have this. And let's take apart this one or let's get some figures out here. So first is this triangle out here. So this one will have this. Then this out here, the sector of the circle out here and then this big triangle out here so we have these three figures out here. and take note that actually the area of this first triangle is less than or to be to be sure less than or equal to the area of this sector and this area of this sector is less than or equal to the area of the bigger triangle and indeed, so if we get back the shade, so let's have this. Observe that if we put this out here, we'll have this one. And then let's put this out here, so we'll have this. And clearly, the area of the sector, this green shade out here, occupies the pink shade, the area of the triangle. So indeed, the area of this one is bigger or larger than the area of this. And the same goes for this last one. So we'll have this. Clearly, it occupies these two shaded regions. And so this inequality indeed holds. And we'll be using this one to understand and obtain this one. And so given this, let's first determine the areas of each of these so for the first figure let's use up some measurements that we have here so we'll have we'll use this one so putting it out here we'll have this and from here to determine the area of a triangle we need its base and height since the area of a triangle is given by one half times base times height so far we already have the base but we don't have the height so this is our problem. But to obtain this, we'll be using this angle out here. Take note that by this angle, this out here is just simply equal to sine x. And why is that? Well, take note that out here, sine x is equal to, so we know that Sokotawa from Sokotawa, we know that sine x is equal to, so so, so that is, opposite over hypotenuse <clears throat> and then out here fortunately 
we know that the hypotenuse is given by 1. So this one is just simply opposite over 1 or simply just opposite. So the opposite out here means that the opposite of the angle, which in this case, if we consider this triangle out here, the opposite of the angle x is equal to the sine of x. And so clearly this one out here is equal to sine x. And so given that, we can now determine the area of this region out here. So we'll have one, so let's clear that first out. So we'll have one half times base, which is one times height, which is again sine of x. So that is the area for our first triangle. Let's now move on to the second region. And again, let's use up some measurements that we have here, specifically these two. So we'll have this. And to get this one, what you need to take note is that the area of a sector or the sector of a circle, so this one, is given by 1 half times theta times r squared. So technically, this was obtained by taking note that the theta is equal to the angle while r is equal to the radius. So technically, if we have a circle, and we have this one out here, this is a theta, and this is the r's. And so applying that to our given, we'll have 1 half times, again, the angle, which in this case is x, times the square of the radius, in this case is 1. So we have this. And let's now move on to the last area, or the area of the bigger triangle, and let's use up some measurements that we have. So we have x and 1 out here. So move that out here, and let's have this. Again, to determine the area of a triangle, we need its base and height. We have the base, but we don't have the height. But you can verify that this one is actually just equal to the tangent of x. And so why is that? So similar, like in this one, we'll be using the concept of Sokotoa. So for this case, we have for tangent, again, we use the Toa part. So that is, or that means that it is equal to opposite over adjacent. Fortunately, we are given the adjacent part, which is 1. And so we know that this one is just equal to 1 or simply just the opposite. So this means that the opposite of the angle x, which is this one, is equal to the tangent of x. Simple as that. And so we now have the base and height, so we can now determine the area for this one. That is, it is equal to 1 half times the base, which is 1, times the height, which is the tangent of x. And so this will be our inequality to focus on. And so let's simplify this inequality. So for the first one, so this one is just equal to sine x over 2. The second one is just equal to x over 2. And the last one is equal to tangent x over 2. You can multiply 2 on every side of the inequality to remove the denominator 2. So we'll have sine x is less than or equal to x, is less than or equal to the tangent of x. What I'll do next is I'll divide sine x in every side of the inequality. So take note that we can do this since sine x out here is not equal to 0 since it is equal to 0 if we have sine of 0. <coughs> But in here, we're just dealing with values approaching 0. So as it approaches 0, the values or this one has values. So it's not 0, so we can divide that one. And moreover, the inequality wouldn't flip since we'll be considering the positive values out here. But if it does flip, it doesn't really matter since you'll see later on why. So either way, if this is positive or negative, it wouldn't flip we, or the flipping of the inequality doesn't affect the outcome that we want. 
but for this one we won't flip it so we'll consider this to be positive so just take note of those nuances so we'll have one then x over sine x and then for this last one take note that tangent of x is equal to sine x over cosine x so we can cancel out the sine x out here since again these two are not equal to zero so we'll be left with one over cosine of x so we have this inequality and by taking its reciprocal we'll have one is greater than or equal to sine x over x is greater than or equal to cosine x take note that when we take the reciprocal of the inequality we'll be reversing the signs or the operation out here rather and it's just re like flip flip this one so here so we'll have this so we just flipped it <clears throat> and let's make some observations out here so before we before that first i forgot to mention that if we consider this a while ago to be negative then we'll just have this one out here but it doesn't really matter since observe that as x approaches zero the value out here oops value out here cosine x approaches one since cosine of zero is equal to one and cosine is just a continuous function so we can consider that one and then for the right one since this one is just constant then we have as x approaches zero one just approaches one and so what can we observe here observe that these two out here approaches one as x approaches zero this means that the limit from the left is equal to one and the limit from the right is also equal to one as x approaches zero in other words we can apply the squeeze theorem so again as x approaches zero we can apply the squeeze theorem out here so that means that by squeeze theorem it follows that the limit inside which is sine x over x also approaches one as x approaches zero and that is basically what we want since we have shown that the limit of sine x over x as x approaches zero is equal to one and so that proves this limit so as you can see it's quite lengthy a lengthy process but you know there's no we can't obtain a nice result without first doing the hard work on it so that is the idea on math and proving certain things on it so take note again that the first special trigonometric limit is this one out here so that is the proof of this one if you want to take a screenshot i'll just clear out some things out here so we we'll have this so we take a screenshot of this one just take note of the flow starting from this to this and up to here and apply the squeeze through there and so yeah that's the proof of this limit and so i hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this one in the next video we'll be proving the second trigon special trigonometric trigonometric limit and yeah i hope you watch that as well so that's it i hope you enjoyed and learned a lot from this one feel free to comment down below if there are parts that are quite confusing and yeah if you have any suggestions and recommendations you may comment that one as well below so yeah that's it and that's all for this video